Now, enthusiasts and journalists alike lamented the day BMW stopped making really good sport wagons, or at least importing them to the United States. But after spending some time with the BMW X3, I'm convinced that maybe they pulled a fast one on us because this SUV has a lot more in common with a wagon than you might think. I'm Antoine Goodwin. Let's take a look at this 2013 BMW X3 X-Drive 28i. Now our example is equipped with two different performance packages, the first being the M performance package, which amongst other things adds these cool little M badges all over the vehicle. But mostly it gives us 19 inch wheels, an adaptive suspension, and BMW's version of a torque vectoring system. You also get really nice sport seats on the inside that are going to grip you in the corners. The second part is the dynamic handling package, which adds adaptive sport steering. So when you go between your different drive modes, the steering feel actually changes also. Now you'll actually control all of those sort of uh, adaptive performance bits with this rocker switch right here. It gives you the uh, access to four different drive modes. The first and default drive mode is comfort. That's the, uh, the one that you'll get when you get in the car and crank it up. You can also rock it forward for sport, which is going to uh, give you a little bit more responsiveness on the pedal. It's going to liven up the uh, adaptive steering just a little bit and also firm up the adaptive suspension for better responsiveness all over. You can rock forward one more time to uh, liven things up just a little bit more and to loosen up the traction control just a hair. Uh, there's also a traction control button here if you want to turn it completely off, but I'm not sure why you'd ever actually want to do that in an all-wheel drive vehicle. Plenty of grip. Then you can also rock back to the Eco Pro mode. This, in my opinion, is probably one of the most interesting modes in this vehicle because it's not really a performance car. It's kind of a get from point A to point B vehicle. So uh, Eco Pro will let you do that in the most fuel efficient way possible. In addition to resetting the steering and suspension to their most comfortable settings, it also does that Eco Mode trick that we've seen in a lot of vehicles where it sort of dulls your pedal inputs and uh, kind of tempers your lead foot. So it takes a little bit more pedal to get the vehicle going, but the upside of that is that you use less fuel. In the Eco Pro menu, you also get a couple of options that will allow you to further increase the fuel economy. Uh, the first thing is you can turn on what's called Eco Pro Climate Controls, which sets the air conditioning and heating system to their most efficient settings so that you save more fuel. You can also set a speed limit warning so that when you exceed a certain speed, you get a warning. Uh, we all know that the faster you drive, the more fuel you use, so you can set like a gentle reminder for yourself to keep it under a certain limit. There's also an interesting Eco Pro potential meter right here that will let you know uh, how much fuel that you're going to be saving by, uh, for example, if you reduce the Eco Pro speed limit to 60, you'll see that number jump up. And if you turn climate controls off of the Eco, you'll see it drop down. Dashboard technology is pretty much what we've seen in about maybe four or five different BMW vehicles of this generation before. Uh, if you want to get a really deep in depth look and hear what Brian Cooley has to say about that, you can check out maybe the BMW X1 review. It's probably the most similarly equipped vehicle to this one. In short, the standard packaging is going to include a full array of digital audio sources, including HD radio and Bluetooth. You've got um, a technology package equipped here, which is going to add navigation and uh, rear view and around view cameras technology. And then we've also got a premium audio package that's going to add satellite radio and a really nice sounding stereo. Now when you lift the hood, you'll notice first that there's actually a lot of empty space here in the engine bay. I don't want to get my hand caught in any moving parts there, but that's because the X3 makes space for the BMW's uh, V6 engine, but this 328 example is actually powered by a twin turbo 2 liter 4 cylinder engine. So it's a much shorter engine pushed back towards the rear of the vehicle. Um, now when I say twin turbo, what I actually mean is twin scroll. There's one turbocharger there with two scrolls. Uh, it spins up a little bit faster than a uh, one large turbo would, so you get less lag. At the end of the day, what you're left with is 240 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque, which is a pretty good amount of power for a vehicle of this size. That's going to go through all four wheels via the X-Drive all-wheel drive system and an eight-speed automatic transmission. 
fuel economy is about 24 miles per gallon combined, which breaks down to 21 in the city and 28 on the highway. Maybe it's me, but it seems like the X3's gotten smaller. The ride height's not much higher than your average uh, large sedan. I go down the road, I look over them, I almost eye level with Prius drivers. And the, the handling is just, it's very natural. It's not very truckish. Um, but then what do you expect? This thing is built on a slightly elevated car platform. Now in the, uh, the sport modes, the, uh, the engine is actually very responsive. Uh, the turbocharged engine, there's not very much lag and I've got pretty good grunt. Um, it's not really what I would consider a performance car though. Don't let all those M badges fool you. Now, the interesting thing is the Eco Pro mode, as I said earlier, it does kind of uh, dull the acceleration a bit, but I get the feeling that people who are interested in the X3, particularly the 28i, are not going to be interested in all out acceleration. Uh, the car still has pretty good pickup. The acceleration is acceptable. It handles about like you would expect a large sedan. I've been driving uh, smoothly and efficiently, and as a result, I've squeezed at this point 4.4 more miles out of a tank uh, than I would have without the EcoPro climate controls and speed warnings and uh, the benefits of that uh, softer uh, accelerator pedal. A part of me is still kind of leaning towards the X1 because I, you know, personally I like smaller vehicles, small hatchbacks, that's just my personal taste. And my heart, of course, will always belong to the BMW 3 Series Touring, which we can't get here in the United States anymore. Now, one of the most common comments that I read on our BMW X1 review was, why would you buy a small car when for a couple thousand more you can get this big BMW X3? Now, not exactly an apples to apples comparison because the 38.5 that'll get you out of the door on this X3 is actually the starting point. It doesn't include about $895 in destination fees, $3,000 for the M Sport package, $1,300 for the adaptive steering, and we haven't even started on the tech. All in to get it as equipped as we have at CNET Style today, $54,095. Now, that's a pretty penny, but it's actually not bad for a vehicle that's as well equipped as this one. Thank you